Welcome to From AMIA to Armistice, a series of podcasts commissioned by UCL Institute of Education. I'm Simon Bendry, Director of the UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours Programme. In August 2018, students from across the United Kingdom joined students from France, the United States, Canada and Australia on the Western Front to commemorate the Battle of Amiens. This series, recorded largely on location during that battlefield tour, tells the story of the Battle of Amiens in the wider context of the First World War and the road to armistice. In this podcast, we are at the Thiepval Memorial to the Missing, which dominates the Somme landscape for miles around. Engraved on the memorial itself are the names of more than 72,000 British and Commonwealth soldiers who have no known grave. I'm Hugh Strawn, I'm Professor of International Relations at St Andrews University, and I'm also a Commonwealth War Graves Commissioner. I'm at Tirpval, the extraordinary memorial designed by Sir Edward Lutchins for the Commonwealth War Graves Commission to mark the missing of the Somme, and also to mark the cooperation and collaboration of the British and French armies in the fighting on the Somme. Commemorated on the arch are the names of 72,000 men from the British armies who have no known grave on the Somme battlefields. It's the most striking, really, of all the memorials put up by Britain after the First World War. It is a series of arches, one upon the other, reaching an apex with the final arch at the top, which commands the surrounding landscape from almost all directions. It has a classical quality, the idea of a Roman arch, a triumphal arch, but of course this is not in any sense triumphant because it commemorates loss, the grief of those who were unable to identify where the graves of those they loved were. In the background there is a tractor going past with bales of straw. We're in rolling Somme farmland, the harvest is all in and the farmers are busy getting the straw in before there's any rain. That reminds us of what a rural landscape this is and how the armies of Britain and of France had to create the infrastructure for industrialised war in what was the very traditional landscape. Drainage, roads, railways were here but not in sufficient abundance to maintain the mass armies that took the field. What came here was the full force of industrialisation in the shape of artillery and in due course tanks and aircraft. I last came here in 2016 for the centenary of the Battle of the Somme and one of the most evocative moments was the arrival of the King's Troop of the Royal Horse Artillery. They had managed to magnify the sound of the bridles jingling, the clip-clop of the hooves, as the King's Troop advanced. So the sensation of a presence of a form of war which still existed in 1916, horse-drawn artillery, the use of horses was immediately evoked and had a capacity to bridge the hundred years since the 1st of July 1916. Dropping away behind the arch is a British cemetery and also a French cemetery, marking the collaboration of the two armies here. The Somme was chosen as a battlefield precisely because it was where the two armies joined and where they could therefore fight as a coalition. And the words that are on the arch, at the top of the arch, say, aux armées britanniques et françaises. We think of the Somme particularly in the context of 1916 and of the British offensive on the 1st of July, but the Somme was fought over continuously between 1914 and 1918. And indeed, in 1918, with particular viciousness, a German offensive here in March 1918, which drove the British back towards Amiens, the principal railway junction that feeds this part of France. And then the British counterattack at Amiens on the 8th of August 1918, which is the reason I'm here now to commemorate that centenary, which for many marks the beginning of the 100 days that will lead to ultimate victory on the 11th of November 1918. You have been listening to From Amiens to Armistice, a Chrome Radio production for UCL Institute of Education. The producer was Katrina Oliphant, with sound design by Chris Sharp. 
In our next podcast, we mark the centenary of the Battle of Amiens with a series of reflections from representatives of the Allied nations recorded during the battlefield tour at the Chateau de Flixicourt and Amiens Cathedral.